So now we're going to introduce the concept of quantum numbers. And quantum numbers are numbers that are used to describe electrons where they exist in their orbitals. And we're going to get into quantum numbers in a little bit of detail, learning about the four quantum numbers and how we assign them to electrons. But to start, we're just going to introduce the first quantum number, which is the principal quantum number, n. And n tells us which principal or main energy level the electron is existing in. In your introductory classes, they should have talked to you at some point about the structure of an atom, that we have the dense nucleus containing protons and neutrons, and somewhere out and around the nucleus, we have electrons. And they, depending on the class, you might have talked about them in shells or orbitals, or some places even talk about like the rings of Saturn, you know, that there's just a series of rings around the nucleus. But now we're going to talk about that a little more specifically and start looking at the shape of some of these things. So the first time we introduce this is in the Rydberg equation. And this relationship allows us to calculate the wavelength when we have an electron moving from one principal energy level to another or one orbital to another. And this relationship is a little awkward because it actually calculates the reciprocal and then you need to invert it. So one over lambda, the reciprocal of the wavelength, is equal to R sub H, a constant, times one over N one squared minus one over N two squared. And that's the Rydberg equation. R sub H is the Rydberg constant and it's given to us in the textbook having six significant figures. N1 and N2 are principal quantum numbers. They are whole numbers and they are integers. And when we deal with this, most of the time we'll be setting this up so that N2 is a bigger number, a bigger integer than N1. Now, from a purely mathematical standpoint, why would it be important that N2 is the bigger number when you put them in here? Because if you don't, you'll get a negative number. So you need the bigger number here, so the reciprocal of the bigger number squared becomes a smaller number, so what's in the parentheses stays positive. Would it make sense to have a negative length? No. The wavelength is the wavelength. How do you, if I measure this bench, it's, I don't know, whatever it is, eight feet or something. What, do I measure it the other way and it's negative eight feet? No, that doesn't make sense, right? So we can't have a negative wavelength. Now, in your textbook, it shows N1 here and N2. In the lab book, for the lab we're going to do next week, it actually shows N2 here and N1. And remember, it doesn't matter which one is N1 and which one is N2. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's just like Shakespeare, Shakespeare, right? Shakespeare, yeah. <laughs> Shakespeare said in Romeo and Juliet, oh, that which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Cast off thy father, deny thy name. Remember all that? The Capulets and the Montagues, okay? So it doesn't matter if you call it N1 or N2. So now let's look at how we use this. Calculate the wavelength in nanometers for the visible line where N2 is equal to 4. On a scale of 1 to 10 of difficulty, this problem's probably about a 4 uh, because it requires you to change your units. This has centimeters to nanometers, and it says visible line where N2 is 4. So when you first read this problem, the first thing that pops in my head is what's N1? And N1 was not written out except that it was right here because it said visible. The visible lines are the Balmer series, so N1 is equal to 2. So in this really small little area of the electromagnetic spectrum, your N1 is always equal to 2 because those are the visible lines. So we'll go ahead, and all we have to do now is plug these numbers in and do a little bit of kind of messy algebra. So 1 over lambda is equal to R sub H times 1 over N1 squared minus 1 over N2 squared. So now we start plugging in. 
1 over lambda is 109,678 reciprocal centimeters, centimeters to the negative 1, times 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over 4 squared. 2 and 4 are integers, so they do not interfere in significant figures, and they don't contribute to significant figures. We have six significant figures in the constant, so I want to keep at least six significant figures when I do my subtraction. So I'll start off, 1 over lambda is 109,678 reciprocal centimeters. Now I'm going to convert this. 2 squared is 4, so 1 fourth is 0.25, and I'm going to add enough zeros that I'll be able to keep six significant figures when I'm done subtracting. 4 squared is 16, 1 sixteenth, <clears throat> and again, I want as many sig figs as I need so that I can have six significant figures when I'm done. So 1 over lambda... It's 109,678 reciprocal centimeters. Now, when I do the subtraction, 0 0.187500, I keep six sig figs there so that I can multiply and have six significant figures in my answer. So I get... Uh, Why do you keep I just randomly added as many zeros as I felt like so that I would have at least six when I was done. Okay? It seems weird, I know. We don't usually do that. But you, you can have as many as you need because these are exact numbers. So I just wanted to make sure that when I was done subtracting, I would have six. So we get 20,575.7 reciprocal centimeters. Now... The biggest problem I see on the quiz and test is my students stop here. We're not done. The question said, what is the wavelength? It didn't say, what is the reciprocal of the wavelength? Because this is 1 over lambda. We call that the wave number. So I need to take the reciprocal, because right now I have units of reciprocal centimeters. I need to tape the reciprocal, and then I have to change that into nanometers from centimeters. So lambda is 1 over 20,575.7 reciprocal centimeters. So that is equal to 4.86009, six significant figures, times 10 to the negative fifth centimeters. That's my wavelength. And I'm still not done because I want this in nanometers. So 4.86009 times 10 to the negative fifth centimeters. If you're not familiar with centimeter to nanometer conversions, go through the base. One meter is one times 10 squared centimeters. And one meter is 1 times 10 to the ninth nanometers. So when I plug this in, I get 486.009 nanometers is my wavelength. So it takes a lot of monkeying around to get the units right. And the most important thing here is to make sure when you're doing this that you're paying attention and you realize you're starting off by calculating the wave number, the reciprocal of the wavelength, and then you have to convert that. So go ahead and do the problem on the next page. Let's just do this one at your seats.